The Blue Division was a unit composed of veterans and prisoners of the Spanish Civil War who were sent to fight with the German army on the Eastern Front. More than 47,000 men were a part of the division at its peak in 1942. These men fought shoulder to shoulder with the German army during the disastrous siege of Leningrad. The Blue Division faced the brunt of the Russian onslaught during their two brief years on the Eastern Front. In 1943, the division was disbanded due to pressure from the Allies. Some decided to stay behind and joined the SS, who created a Spanish unit composed of 5,000 men, who would serve under the Germans until the end of the war. The Blue Division was more than just a group of volunteers, but a pawn in the diplomatic struggle for Spanish sovereignty. Generalissimo Francisco Franco was the leader of the right wing during the Spanish Civil War. He waged a war against a collection of liberals, socialists, and communists from 1936 to 1939. Franco won the war thanks to German and Italian aid. The Generalissimo was the victor, but his country was in ruin, and he was caught between Allied and Axis guns. One wrong move on the world stage, and he could end up with an invasion from either side. As we all know, Franco was a fascist, and he had German sympathies. He wanted to get involved in World War II, but he had outrageous demands. Franco argued that upon victory, Spain should be given all of North Africa. Hitler denied this request out of fear that Frenchmen living in Vichy, France, would leave and join General Charles de Gaulle in England if they lost their African empire. Hitler and his foreign minister, Ribbentrop, spent hours trying to get Spain into the war, but Franco would not budge, and he decided to stay neutral if he did not get his demands. In 1941, plans were drawn up by Hitler and his general staff to invade Spain and take Gibraltar from the British if Franco would not join the war in some way. In 1941, the invasion of the Soviet Union changed everything. The Generalissimo found a way to appease the Germans, along with being able to wipe the debt that he owed to them for helping him win the Civil War. Within hours of the invasion, Foreign Minister Raymond Sonnier proposed the creation of the Blue Division. Sonnier later stated that, To me, the clever thing about this division is that the Germans should see us as sincere, and that, in some way, with the modest means which we have, We've taken a path of action, but not as a nation, but some Spaniards, who have the right to be pro-German and to be volunteers. Franco told Germany that he would not join the war against the Soviet Union officially, but he would send a division. This division could not officially be a part of the army, and the Phalangists, the ruling party in Spain, wanted to have direct control of the unit. The army fought against this due to a portion of the division was made up of companies within the Spanish army that were pressed into service. The Phalangists were rivals to the military because the military had taken a leadership role during the Civil War. Franco intervened and sided with the military. He picked a general that was both a Phalangist, but not in the party, and a military man. His name was Augustin Grande. Grande was born on January 27, 1896. He spent most of his life in the military and attended several military academies throughout Spain. As a teenager, he was sent to Morocco. Grande took part in the Battle of Alcacimes in 1925, and during the Spanish Civil War, he served under Franco as a general of the Army of North Africa. He led the famed Spanish Legion in the Battle of Malgia, working with Italian troops and the German Navy in taking the city. Grandes was one of Spain's most experienced soldiers, and he was familiar with the German military command structure. Around 18,000 men joined the division, most of them being veterans of the Spanish Civil War. The Germans sent the Spaniards to Bavaria for training. In Germany, the Blue Division received a crash course in army command structure and were equipped with German weaponry. They wore the same uniforms as the Germans, and the only thing distinguishable about the Blue Division was a pack on their shoulder. Upon finishing their training, they were given the designation of the 250th Infantry Division and were sent joining Army Group Center on the Eastern Front, and they were expected to take part in Operation Typhoon by late summer. The division left on August 20th for Russia. Due to the vast extent of Russia and the poor German logistics network, the Blue Division would have to walk for the next month straight to reach the front line. This march was no walk in the woods. The roads into the Soviet Union were plagued with mines and partisans destroyed tanks and trucks through the road, and villages from Poland all the way to Moscow were burned down. The soldiers marched about 25 miles a day with little rations and few breaks. Men stepped on landmines at random, and soldiers collapsed from exhaustion. More than 3,000 soldiers were sent home after the march due to them breaking down from the strain of marching. 
When the division was halfway to their position, Hitler ordered the Blue Division to be sent north to Leningrad. Grandes viewed this as an insult, believing that Armour Group North was a secondary front. The German High Command changed the placement of the Blue Division due to perceived notions of unprofessional behavior. Field Marshal Theodor von Bach wrote that the Spanish view grooming the horses as a bother, feeding them unnecessary. Belt and suspenders are cut from new harnesses. Gas mask containers are often used as coffee pots. Dust and driving glasses are cut from gas masks. Rifles are often sold. New bicycles are thrown away as they find tire repair too boring. The MG34 is often assembled with the help of a hammer. Parts left over during assembly are buried. Army Group North was anything but a second front. In 1941, Hitler gave Field Marshal von Lieb two armies, the 16th and 18th along with one panzer group. Lieb also received two large air corps to help him take the city. Lieb was able to push north and originally planned to take Leningrad outright, but Hitler instead ordered Lieb to put the city under siege and transfer his spare divisions to Armour Group Center to take part in Operation Typhoon. Lieb was appalled by this news. The field marshal was one of the most senior members in the German army. He led troops in the Boxer Rebellion in China and fought in the trenches during World War I. Lieb was on the cusp of victory, and he was halted and forced to divert troops to the advance on Moscow. The marshal was again starving the local population and disobeyed Hitler's orders to kill civilians fleeing the city. Lieb was allowed to take some moves of his own and advanced into the Leningrad suburb, but he had to make room for the Finnish army under Field Marshal Mannerheim. The Blue Division was forced to turn around and march north. On October 11th, the Blue Division finally reached the front line and were sent to Novograd. After more than a month of marching, they reached the front line right as snow started the fall. Upon reaching the battlefield, the Germans noticed that the command structure of the Blue Division was different than the Wehrmacht. There was little divide between enlisted men and officers. Orders were not given at a shout, but over breakfast or coffee. The division was more laid back than their German equivalents. Treatment of civilians was different from the Germans, who viewed the Russian people as subhuman, to put it mildly. The Spanish worked, lived, and traded with the local population. Some men in the division took Russian girlfriends, and some even got married and had kids that they took back to Spain. When the Blue Division was moved to different parts of the front line, the local population would move with them. Russian POWs were also treated humanely, with them serving as aides to the division. Some even took up arms against the Russian onslaught and joined the division. Spanish soldiers during the afternoon took siestas and gave their rifles to POWs to keep watch while they slept. During the night, Russian POWs were lookouts. If the Red Army was doing a night raid, the POWs would awake the division. A Russian woman who lived with the Blue Division wrote that the Spanish received two lots of rations, one from the German army and the other from the Spanish, and what was left over they shared with the people. The civil population immediately appreciated the benevolent character of the Spanish who quickly established bonds of affection with the children. Such relationships were unthinkable with the Germans. When the Germans were moving their wagons, they never allowed anyone for any reason to get aboard. When the Spanish did so, the trucks and drivers were swamped with children. Spanish soldiers walked along the streets surrounded by children, hanging onto their arms and on their shoulders. The Blue Division's treatment of local civilians does not excuse their actions. The men in the division were extremely brutal to Russian soldiers and partisans. Upon reaching Novograd, the Blue Division found the city in ruin. Most of the city was reduced to ash due to the relentless Stuka bomber attacks against the stubborn Soviet defenders. The division was ordered to support the 162nd Infantry Division, who were low on men and material. The Blue Division took part in an offensive across the Volkov River. The goal of the Blue Division was to push the Red Army back into the city and further contain the Russians. The Spaniards moved in unison with two neighboring German divisions. Their orders were to pin as many Russians as possible, so the Germans on another sector could break through. Heavy artillery fire pinned the Russians down, and the Blue Division sent troops across the river to raid Russian lines. The Red Army, facing against the Blue Division, was made up of poorly equipped conscripts, and they surrendered quickly. The Blue Division was then ordered to make a crossing over the river in force, now that the Russian line had been thinned out. Lieb ordered that the division to move and take Novogorod Bridge that the Red Army held in the north section of the city. The Spaniards drove off the remnants of the Soviet defenders. A couple hours later, the Russians regrouped and counterattacked, which halted the Spanish breakthrough. The winter of 1941 and 1942 was one of the worst winters in Russian history, and Hitler's army did a poor job of providing winter equipment, believing that the war would have ended by early winter. On October 23rd, the Russians went on the offensive against the Spanish-held town of Centeno. Three Soviet battalions smashed into the Blue Division. 
Outnumbered and outgunned, the division held on for dear life. More than 80 soldiers in the Blue Division were killed. By the 30th, the Blue Division was stopped by the Russians, who threw wave after wave of conscripts against the division. This stopped the Blue Division's advance, and the Blue Division was then forced to go into the offensive. The division struggled due to the lack of air support. Stuker bombers could have easily cleared out the entrenched Russians, but without it, they were stuck. Mud, rain, and Red Army reinforcements from Siberia prevented major movements. The only thing the Blue Division could do was dig in, but the earth was frozen. They had to use explosives to uncover the dirt, and they had to use POWs to work around the clock to get the trenches dug before the Soviets counterattacked. The cold weather forced the Blue Division to build makeshift shelters and to move into homes of Russian families. Soldiers built massive bonfires, which attracted the attention of the Red Air Force, who bombed their camps during the night. Despite the brutality of the fighting, the Blue Division treated their POWs humanely. The relationship between the Spaniards and the POWs were reciprocal. There is this one story of a Spanish soldier that was watching POWs excavate trenches and he passed out due to hypothermia. Instead of the POWs running away, they saved the soldier by building a bonfire. Upon the Spanish soldier waking up, they returned his rifle to him and went back to digging. For the next three weeks, Soviet artillery pounded Spanish lines. In between the bombardments, the Russians threw wave after wave of infantry against the Blue Division. On December 8th, Grandes ordered a withdrawal, and during the night, they ret retreated back across the river to friendly lines. The Blue Division was only in combat for about a month, and they had lost around 2,400 men. Despite such heavy casualties, spirits were high. Dozens of soldiers got medals from Franco. On January 10th, a detachment of the Blue Division was sent to save a trapped German garrison north of the city. 205 men set out in the cold, and only 13 Spaniards came back alive, but they saved the garrison. In February, north of Leningrad, the division faced the brunt of the Second Soviet Shock Army. The Spaniards fought in waist-deep snow and were outnumbered, but were able to encircle the Russian attackers. The division took around 5,000 prisoners and 54 heavy artillery pieces, along with 100 Russian officers. By March, the division was running low on manpower and reinforcements were called up from Spain. Portions of the regular Spanish army were again transferred to the Blue Division. Men over 30 with a family were sent home and rotated out the division. General Grande was recalled and brought back to Spain, but not to be punished, but to be brought into Franco's inner circle. General Esteban A. Fontes took command of the Blue Division. In 1942, Spanish Air Force volunteers took to the skies and joined the 27th Fighter Group. They flew more than 2,300 missions and won 88 air battles against the Russians. In the summer of 1942, the Blue Division was put in a reserve role for a hypothetical storming of Leningrad that would never come. In January and February in 1943, the division took part in the defense of Lake Ladoga and fought against relentless Soviet assaults once more. The Blue Division was hit by the largest artillery bombardment of the war on the Eastern Front at that point. After the bombardment, 33,000 Soviet infantry crashed into the Blue Division's lines. The Spaniards were almost encircled and were forced to retreat to a secondary ring of trenches. The Blue Division held on barely, with men using makeshift weapons and tools to fight off the Soviet attackers. At first, the Blue Division was viewed as weak compared to the average German military division, but the German army grew the respect of Blue Division. By the spring of 1943, Franco once again had to balance himself between superpowers. The Allies had landed in North Africa and drove the Germans out of the continent. In Russia, the Soviets beat the Germans at the Battle of Moscow and encircled Army Group South at Stalingrad. Allied lend leased material and equipment replaced Soviet losses, and by 1943, the Soviets were ready to go on the offensive. In July of that year, Mussolini was overthrown by his people after the Allies landed in Sicily. Allied pressure forced Franco to withdraw the Blue Division from Russia. Franco told Germany that not only had it recently become more difficult to mobilize Spanish volunteers for this unit, but that he had to expect an allied ultimatum for the withdrawal of the Blue Division sooner or later. For this reason, he preferred to anticipate such an ultimatum and to respect for the Reich government the withdrawal of the division. By late 1943, most of the Blue Division was sent home, and the 81st and 132nd Infantry Division replaced the Spaniards at Leningrad. The most radical soldiers of the Blue Division refused to leave, and they were allowed to stay. Around 4,000 men remained in German uniform. Franco created a new unit for them and called it the Spanish Legion. The Legion would hold a small sector of the Leningrad defenses and were almost destroyed with the rest of Army Group North when the Russians broke the siege 
in a massive offensive. Farmer Group North in retreat, Franco disbanded the Spanish Legion, seeing the writing on the wall. About a thousand soldiers decided to defy Franco's orders and stayed in the German army. These men would fight till the end, and some of these Spaniards would be found in the Reichstag in 1945. After the war, Grandes was made Minister of War and devoted most of his time to bring around 182 members of the Blue Division home from Soviet prisons. It took more than a decade for these men to return home due to Spain having no relations with the Soviets. Alright, well that's it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you in the next one.